Hi everybody, my name is Debbie Ray and I'm the owner of PedigreePups.com and today I'd like to take a couple of minutes to share some information with you about another AKC group of dog and today we'll talk about the Terriers. Now what exactly are the Terriers? The AKC Terrier group are, are filled with dogs that were bred to tirelessly hunt vermin both above and below the ground. You can think of these dogs if you'd like as the pest controllers of the world. Typically, these dogs have little tolerance for any other kind of animals, be it other dogs, uh, any kind of, of uh, fast-moving animal, the postman, or any other kind of intruder. Most terriers have wiry coats, and these coats require special grooming to maintain their characteristic appearance. Some of these dogs were named for what they were bred to hunt, while others were named for their place of origin. They can make great pets, but these terriers do require determined owners to match their dog's spirited personalities. So if you're looking for an alert, playful, and affectionate friend, then you would probably be well suited to any member of the terrier group. So let's talk about the members of the terrier group. And these are all dogs that were uh, members as of March 25th, 2008. So the first dog we'll talk about is the Airedale Terrier. Now the Airedale Terrier is the largest member of the terrier breeds. Uh, they were also one of the first breeds to be used for police duty in Germany and Great Britain. These dogs are intelligent enough to quickly learn what's required of them, but they can become easily bored or even refuse if you ask them to do the same thing over and over and over and over again. Their coat is dense and wiry and requires a great deal of grooming. These dogs are good-natured and they're fun-loving, but they're not recommended for apartment life. They do need plenty of exercise and they're fairly energetic. The next dog we'll talk about in the Terriers, we'll talk about the American Staffordshire Terrier. Now these dogs are intelligent and they're excellent guardians and they should give the impression of great size for, excuse me, great strength for their size. Their ears are usually cropped but this is optional. These dogs are generally larger in size and bone structure, head size, and overall weight than their cousins the American Pitbull Terrier. American Staffordshire Terriers are a very well put together dog. They're muscular but they're also agile and very graceful and they're keenly aware of their surroundings. Over the past 50 years, careful breeding has produced an affectionate, reliable, and an especially good dog choice for people with children. They can make great pets with the right kind of owner. The Australian Terrier is a small, sturdy dog from the outback of Australia. These dogs are friendly and very affectionate, and their small size makes them a wonderful companion and friend and a great dog to travel with. They can do fine without a yard as long as they are taken outside for frequent walks. And these dogs come in blue and tan, solid sand, or solid red in color. They have a harsh textured outer coat, a distinctive ruff and apron, and a very soft silky top nut. Don't let the small size fool you though. This is a tough dog with the courage of a much larger dog, and these dogs are all terrier. And the Bedling Terrier is one of the more unusual looking members of the Terrier group. These dogs are small, are smart, they're very strong, graceful, and these dogs were built for speed. Unlike the other terrier breeds, the Bedlington Quarry were hare and rabbits, not rats and other things like, like most of the terriers chased. This is why a faster gait was needed to course their intended prey because the, their, terrier, their prey excuse me, lived above ground and they needed much faster speed to be able to catch them. Its unique appearance, it looks kind of like a greyhound or a whippet, combined with its assertive demeanor are two reasons why this dog is described as having the head of a lamb and the heart of a lion. The Bedlington Terriers very fast can gallop at great speeds and they love to chase prey. They're a very high energy dog and they need a great deal of vigorous activity. Now the Border Terrier has a weather resistant coat and a hard wiry outer coat that repels most dirts. The coat requires regular brushing to keep its appearance and to keep it neat and tidy, uh, you want to you know, brush it daily. Overall, borders are considered a very quiet breed compared to most terriers and they're not given to yapping needlessly. If they do bark, there's a reason for it and this makes them very excellent watchdogs. In the field, these dogs are referred to as hard as nails. They are a great family companion and they're good tempered, affectionate, obedient, and very easily trained. These dogs love children and they're very friendly and they're a very sensitive member of the family. Next, we'll talk about the Bull Terrier. Now, the Bull Terrier needs to be a strongly built, muscular, symmetrical, and very active dog. They're also known as the gladiator of the canine race. They have a keen disposition, uh, they're very determined, a very intelligent expression, but they're full of fire. They also have a sweet disposition and they're very amenable to discipline. 
Now these dogs are playful, they're affectionate, and they make wonderful pets and companions despite their tough appearance. They have triangular eyes, a very characteristic egg-shaped head, a Roman nose, and short erect ears. These dogs are happiest when, the, when they're with the people that they love. Uh, the closer they are to the people, the better off they are. These dogs come in two varieties, the colored and the solid white bull terrier. Now the Cairn Terrier is an alert, intelligent, and a very active dog, and these dogs like to dig a lot. They're very uh, easily to, you know, carry from, from, you know, place to place or whatever because of their small size, but yet they're tough enough uh, to easily, you know, withstand roughhousing with children or whatever, but they're best suited to a home where they'll be reared with a firm and consistent discipline. They need a good bit of exercise, contrary to what you see in the Worcester Vase. Most Cairns would not like to be, you know, toted around in a basket all day long. Um, these dogs are definitely not the best choice of dog for someone looking for a pet to cuddle with. They're simply too active and they don't make good lap dogs. And the Dandy Denmont Terrier is a long, low-bodied working terrier and they have a curved outline. These dogs are longer than tall and they got their name from a character in a book written by Sir Walter Scott back in 1814. It has a distinctive head, a large silken top knot, but this is in proportion to the size of the dog. Its dark eyes are large and they're round, and they have a soft, wise expression. This short-legged breed of terrier was developed in the 17th century as an otter and badger specialist. They're intelligent, uh, they're independent, and they are, have a very friendly disposition, and they make a wonderful dog to live with. If they ever encounter a mouse or a rat, however, their hunting instincts will come alive, so always keep your dandy on a leash or in a fenced-in area when you're outside with them. Now the fox terriers, there are two, two varieties, the smooth coat and the wire coat. Then the smooth fox terrier was bred to be a hunter of small game. Their instinct is to work alone without man's guidance. They love to be with us, but they don't necessarily need our constant approval. A smooth should always be kept in a securely fenced yard or on a leash when they're outside being walked. The wire-coated uh, ter fox terrier, they're very lively little dogs. They're busy, bouncy, they're very alert and active, and they're always ready for fun. This dog breed is lots of fun for older children, you know, like seven years or older, who can give it lots of daily play and exercise. The wire's coat is different from the smooths in that it is crinkled and wiry with a soft undercoat. These dogs are roughly the same size. And the Glen of a Mall Terrier is one of the four terrier breeds that came from Ireland, and they're very gentle and docile companions. These dogs can live with other pets if socialized to them early on. However, they can chase cats and other small pets if given the chance. This is a short-legged dog that's very low to the ground with a long, low body and a shaggy, medium coat. Although generally less excited than most of the other terrier breeds, the Glen is always ready to give chase and they love to dig. These breeds can do okay indoors, but a fence yard f for additional outside exercise would be an added bonus. They love to be taken on walks. Now, the Irish Terrier is one of the oldest of the terrier breeds. This breed is a daredevil, and they're very affectionate and also a very good-tempered dog. They can be quite fun, but overall are not considered as, as a hyperactive breed of dog. They are more than eager to join in on any fun and festivities that are occurring. These dogs can be good with children if the children treat these dogs with respect, but they also have same-sex aggression issues with other dogs. These dogs are best with cats if raised with them from an early, early, early age. As an active-minded, intelligent dog, these dogs need to learn complex tasks, complex tasks, forgive me, if they feel they have the motivation to do so. The Kerry Blue Terrier originated in Ireland also, and these dogs are an all-around working and utility terrier. The Kerry is the national dog of, or excuse me, the national terrier of Ireland. And by the way, there they're called the Irish Blue Terrier. This breed was used in Ireland and England for hunting small game and birds and also for retrieving from land and water. Typically these dogs are very intelligent, they're very alert, playful, determined, and they like to get in there and roughhouse with the best of them. These dogs are born black and they begin to change color anywhere from 6 to 18 months of age. Ultimately, carries may be anything from a light silver blue to a dark slate blue in color. The carry blue uh, can make a, a excellent family dog however they're not not one of the ones that you maybe always want in the department however as long as you have an outside yard for them to exercise that would be fine but proper socialization of these dogs is a must
Now the Lakeland Terrier was bred to hunt vermin in the rugged shell mountains of the Lake Districts of Northern England. These dogs originated there uh, and they're very similar in overall look to the Welsh Terrier. His attitude is that of a happy, friendly, and self-confident dog, but they're not overly aggressive. They're always alert and ready to go, and the Lakeland is a very hardy working dog known for his tenacity as well as his good humor, and they're able to adapt to most living conditions, be it country or city. These dogs are bold, confident, and they make a very good companion. Now, the Manchester Terrier was long ago known as the Gentleman's Terrier. This dog breed was bred in England to kill vermin as well as to course small game. They come dressed in a small, short black coat with a distinctive rich mahogany markings and a tapered tail. There are two varieties of this breed, the Toy and the Standard. Except for size and ear options, there are virtually no differences between the Standard and the Toy except that the toy is a diminutive version of the standard. Though he looks like a miniature Doberman Pinscher, these two breeds are not related in any way. The Manchester Terriers do need plenty of exercise, but they can do well inside as long as there is an outside exercise area for them. Now the miniature Bull Terrier is uh, another Bull Terrier, uh, and these dogs are smaller in size than the regular Bull Terrier. Again, they must be strongly built, muscular, very symmetrical and active, and they have a keen and intelligent expression. These dogs are full of fire, but they're also very sweet and loving, and they're uh, very playful dogs. They make wonderful companions, despite their tough-looking appearance. Again, these dogs, like their older cousins, the uh, Bull Terriers, they have triangular eyes, uh, short erect ears, um, they have that Roman nose, that egg-shaped head, and they're happiest with the people they love. And the closer they are to them, the better off they are. Now the miniature Schnauzer, on the other hand, is a, a very robust and active dog. These are a, a terrier-type dog. They're resembling their larger cousin, the standard Schnauzer. Uh, this dog has a harsh, wiry outer coat and a dense, soft undercoat. They should be clipped all over to an even length at least twice a year. Overall, they have very little doggy odor and they shed little to no hair. The uh, miniature Schnauzer was originally bred to be a small dog, uh, a small working dog, uh, to go to ground for all kinds of vermin. These dogs make excellent family pets and they weigh typically around 13 to 15 pounds and they do get along well with children. Typically their wiry double coat is groomed to have a beard and bushy eyebrows. Now the Norfolk Terrier is a small, sturdy, and fearless little dog. Uh, additionally, these are one of the smallest of the working terriers. These dogs can be distinguished from the Norwich Terrier by their drop or folded ears. The Norfolk is a hardy little dog that was originally bred to go to ground after vermin or also they were bred to hunt in packs. These dogs are people oriented and they don't like to be left alone. Um, they should not be left off their lead unless they're inside a secured area. These dogs are very active and they can do fine in an apartment as long as they're you know, sufficiently exercised. Generally speaking, they do get along well with other household pets as long as they're introduced to them early as a young puppy. Typically, they're very happy and self-confident dogs, and they're, they're very good companions. Now, the Norwich Terrier are others, are, is another small terrier breed. And these dogs, again, are spirited, uh, and they have little prick ears and a very foxy-looking expression. Uh, these prick ears are a very distinguishing feature for this, for this particular dog breed. It is one of the smallest of the working terriers, and it is also very active, courageous, affectionate, and fearless. This is a true terrier in all respects. This sturdy descendant of ratting companions is more than eager to dispatch small vermin, be it alone or in a pack. These are definitely not lap dogs and should not be confused with the toy breeds in any way just because of their small size. Bred as working terriers, they do these dogs have a great need for activity and exercise. They do love everyone and they're good with children and, and other pets as long as they're socialized early on. In the Parson Russell Terrier, and these dogs were developed in the south of England in the 1800s as a white terrier to work European red fox both above and below ground. Now this terrier was named for the Reverend John Russell. An important to breed type is a very natural appearance. The dog needs a harsh weatherproof coat uh, that needs to have a compact construction and they need to have a very clean silhouette. This dog has a broken or either a smooth coat. He is a very game hunter. They're tenacious and very courageous dogs. At home, they can be playful, exuberant, and overwhelmingly affectionate. 
These intelligent dogs are also very independent and energetic and they require a lot of attention. The Scottish Terrier was bred in England, excuse me, in Scotland, as a fierce hunter of fo foxes and badgers. Now, this dog's nickname is Lil Die Hard. They're a small, compact, short-legged little dog, uh, and in the 1930s, Scotties were one of the most popular pets in the United States. They're also renowned for being featured in the board game Monopoly as one of the player tokens. These dogs should have a hard, wiry, weather-resistant coat and a thick-set, cobby little body which uh, is hung well between short, heavy legs. The characteristics, all of these included uh, uh, and joined with their special piercing, that varmity expression that they have, make this dog a, a, a one of a kind. Um, these are all very important features of the breed. And these dogs, again, can be great companions with the right owner. And the Celium Terrier looks a little bit like the Scottish Terrier, but these dogs were originally bred in Wales. Now the Sealy loves people. They really enjoy being house dogs and companions, but they're not as rowdy as some of the other terrier breeds. The Celium is an affectionate companion and they have a lot of terrier spunk. They're very playful, eager to please, and have a very sociable uh, personality. Now, these dogs may be independent, but they'll also be devoted and loyal to their family. These dogs were bred to work with other celiums in hunting packs. As a result of this, the whole group of celiums can live peacefully together. Overall, they can be somewhat reserved with strangers, but they do well with other pets, especially if they are raised with them from an early age. And the Sky Terrier is one that you may not see very often. Now these, these dogs have a long beautiful coat and uh, just make sure if you decide you would want one of them you think about the considerations of keeping that coat from preventing from matting. The Sky Terrier is covered with a profuse coat that falls straight down either side of its body and over its ribs. Their hair is well feathered on its head and it veils its forehead and eyes to serve as protection from brush and from briar as well from seri other serious encounters from the animals that it may hunt. The Sky Terrier requires extensive early socialization with other pets and people, otherwise he may, be, he may grow up to be overly suspicious of strangers. These dogs are very easy to exercise and they can adjust to city or apartment life or to country homes with ease. Now the soft-coated Wheaton Terrier is a medium-sized sporting terrier. These dogs are well distinguished from other terriers by, with their soft, silky, and gently waving coat of a warm Wheaton color and their particularly steady disposition. Wheaton puppies have a very dark coat when they are small and this gradually grows out into, into the traditional wheat colored coat as they grow up. These dogs have hair like human hair or poodle hair, which does not shed like most dogs but they do need regular trimming as it continues to grow. They are usually very good with children and they can get along well with other dogs as long as they're socialized with them when they're very young. Now the Staffordshire Bull Terrier has a great affection for people. These dogs are gentle, affectionate, trustworthy, and very loyal dogs. They do require vigorous exercise and uh, to maintain their, their muscle tone and they also need a firm experienced handler who, who gives them consistent training. These dogs can live happily in the city or country as long as he's given a good physical workout on a frequent basis. Due to their dog fighting history, there is a tendency of aggression toward other dogs, so be forewarned and act accordingly around other dogs. Please understand that dog aggression is not the same as human aggression in this breed. Any staffy that is aggressive to strange dogs may still be completely trustworthy when they are around other human beings. These dogs can be great companions in the right homes. Now the Welsh Terrier is a sturdy, rugged, and a friendly dog. They're also outgoing and very playful. They love people, they're alert, and they're also always ready for action. They can be content in a city apartment or in the country uh, as long as they have you know, the proper amount of exercise. These dogs, uh, their, their legs, underbody, and he head are tan. The jacket is black or occasionally a gristle color. Their tail is stocked to a length meant to complete the image of a square dog, meaning that these dogs are approximately as tall as they are long. These dogs are good with other children, however, they are not known for their friendliness toward other animals or cats, which can trigger its hunting instinct. The best home for these dogs is with an active family with older children and a fenced-in yard. Now, the West, Wild West Highland White Terrier is, is all terrier. 
the Wisties can be very good with children and uh, with other dogs. As, however, there can be same-sex aggression issues. The West Highland White Terrier coat is about two inches long, white in color. It's very hard. It has plenty of soft undercoat. The West Highland requires professional grooming every few months, and they can have issues with dry skin and bathing too frequently, and this can aggravate those problems. If they live with cats and other small animals, well, it's going to be problematic at best. Typically, these dogs are under 20 pounds in weight and around 11 inches or so tall. If you'd like to learn about other AKC purebred dogs, or if you'd like to learn about other AKC, AKC purebred dog breeds, please visit my website at www.pedigreedpups.com. I hope you've learned some great information here, and I hope you've enjoyed it, and thank you for visiting. Have a great day.